This is the Segway Cube battery pack that was sent to me by Segway. They emailed me and said, hey, do you wanna do a video about our battery pack? And I said, sure. They sent me the battery itself, which is this top part. You can see it kind of separated into the three sections right here. This bottom piece and this top piece come together and this is a spare battery, a secondary battery that goes in between the two. You can add two of these. They only sent me one, but you could add more than that to it. It is a lithium ion battery. So the chemistry is pretty good. It's got these feet on the side. You can turn it over on the side. We'll get a close up of that here in a minute. You take these screws out right here and the whole battery lifts off. And then you put the spare battery in between. And like I said, you can add a second one. I believe it does up to 5,000 kilowatt hours or 5,000 watt hours, five kilowatt hours. I want to say that right. My math is wrong. But that's uh, you can you can add a third battery to it to get it up that high. It's kind of bright right now, so we're going to move over here into the shade here in a minute, and I'll show you the screen a little bit. It's got three AC plugs totaling 2,200 watts max each. Uh, that's 2,200 watts shared between the AC plugs. It's got these barrel connectors that are 13.6 volt, five amp each. Uh, you can plug in various barrel connectors there. And then it's got cigarette lighter adapter, of course. It's got four USB-A quick charge 3.0 adapters or connectors. And it's got two USB-C 100 watt PD connectors. For clarification on these ports, these two batteries here, this battery that came with it is the BT-1000 and the extra battery is BTX-1000. These are both 1000 watt hours. So you can stack three more of these for a total of 5000 watt hours and make it kind of tall in my opinion. I don't know. That's how the battery stack and they're 1000 watt hours each. The packaging was a little ambiguous, but I did get clarification from the manufacturer that these are 1000 watt hours each. This of course is a shared 2200 watt AC inverter that's built in here. And these, originally I thought these were shared 100 watts because of these brackets around them, but they did clarify for me that each of these USB-C ports was a PD-100, so the power distribution 100 per port. So that is, that's a that's pretty good right there to have two PD-100s on the front of this power station here. That's gonna give you a lot of power where you need it in uh, various things. Power button here, turn the DC on here, turn the AC on here, that kind of thing. There's nothing really on the sides or anything, but in the back, this is cool. In the back is your charging port, obviously. This is a breaker, your regular computer plug, AC plug charging port right there. And then we've got actual Anderson power poles on the back. Proper configuration with the red on the right, if you're looking down from the top, the way that Bioeno and a lot of other ham radio manufacturers associate their red and black ports for Anderson power poles, that's done the same way. So my Gigaparts panel, which I'm gonna show you here in a minute, will plug directly into this port right here. So Anderson power poles. And then it talks about everything it'll do right here. It says it will do 12 to 60 volts of solar input, up to 20 amps of solar input, and up to 800 watts of solar input. The biggest panel I've got today is my Gigaparts orange 300 watt panel, which does about 14 to 16 amps in perfect sunlight. It's about 16 amps in perfect sunlight. So we're gonna plug that in and see what it looks like here in just a minute. And that thing's already got power poles, so we're good to go on that. So let's get a close up of the station real quick. All right, I set it over here in the shade. It's bright out today. It's December and it's uh, 65, 70 degrees outside. Yeah, moving on. Okay, welcome to Texas. All right, so here's the screen. And it's not, it is not very bright. There's not really a way to make it go any brighter than that. It's at 72%. It says zero watts in and out right now because there's nothing coming into it. 99 hours, it's got an X2 right there at the bottom. X2 means it's got two batteries on it. It comes with one again, the BT-1000 and the BT-Extra-1000 right there. The difference between this one, this bottom one, and this middle one is that this middle one has a port, a connection port on the top and the bottom. And then this bottom one that comes with the unit has feet on the bottom of it, so you can't put you have to take this, this thing apart to put the extra batteries in the middle. So if I got another extra battery, it would go either right here or right here in between the original bottom and original top. That's how that works. I guess, I guess it makes it a little bit more easier to carry around, I guess. You can see it's got feet on the side here, so you can lay it on the side. It is a lithium ion battery, not lithium iron phosphate, not lithium polymer, lithium ion battery, very similar to what's in your smartphone. In other words, lithium batteries don't matter. They're, they're not sealed. They're not liquid or anything, sealed gel or anything like that. You can turn them upside down, run them sideways, whatever. So it's perfectly fine to uh, set this on its side. In fact, if you notice, the plugs are actually what I would call upside down. 
Not that that matters really, but I, I guess you could turn the whole thing upside down if you wanted to, though then your screen would be upside down. <laughs> so here's a close up of the USB ports and a close up of the barrel ports. I'm gonna assume those barrel ports are probably similar to like a bioinal barrel port. So, and those are DC out, 13.6 volt, five amp. So you can charge other items. You could probably charge a bioinal battery by plugging it in there. That right there, what I wanna do is plug in this solar panel and see how much juice it brings in here. So if you're gonna be using this in bright sunlight, it's gonna be hard to see the screen because there does, does not seem to be a way to increase the brightness on the screen. You can turn the screen off and on and the screen will go off by itself after a certain period of time to save battery power, of course. Most of your power stations will do that. I've mentioned in multiple videos, this is one of my favorite solar panels. This is the Gigaparts 300 watt solar panel. Fold up what they call in the overlanding world a solar blanket, because it folds up. It's not completely rollable, like some of the power film stuff, but it's not rigid either. It's not on a frame. I carry it and it's little brother, the 150 watt, pretty much with me everywhere I go in the back seat of my truck. And many times I will use this to charge the battery in the truck. So I moved this into our really filthy storage building out here at the lease. So if you see the 72 kind of surge or, you know, kind of like waving wave, that's the, that's the frame rate of the camera. The, the, uh, the screen itself is quite solid right now. And you can see it's bringing in 87 Watts of solar pan, uh, solar power. I've got it plugged directly into the station here via these lines going right to the panel. Now, these stations have built-in charge controllers. So unlike plugging into like, say directly into a battery or something like that, these stations have built-in charge controllers. You don't have to worry about overcharging the battery. So at this rate at 87 Watts, it will be charged in seven hours according to that meter right there. Now we don't have seven hours. Well, you know what? We got right at seven hours of sunlight left, but the sun's not gonna be in the same place in the sky for the next seven hours. And 87 watts is not really much for a 300 watt solar panel, but it's winter, the sun is low in the sky, and the panel is pointed straight up instead of at the sun. My 250 watt panel right there on another battery system I have is pointed more at the sun right now, and it's pulling in about 180 watts into, my, in, into another battery I've got. So the purpose of this demonstration was to show you that the solar panel could be plugged directly into the power station and, and <laughs> that it has power poles on it. That's really cool. I, I really think it's cool when these companies put actual Anderson power pole connections on their batteries. Uh, some of the larger batteries have those, but many of the smaller batteries like the sub one kilowatt stations don't have that. So I think it's really great that those have that. So the last test I wanna do is I wanna, I wanna go grab my Icon IC705 and uh, boot it up and look at the waterfall while I turn on certain individual things on this battery box. So let's check that out real quick. Got the 705 out, took it out of the box, got it setting up next here. And I've got my pack antenna connected into it and I don't have the whole antenna strung out. I have it strung out to about right there, but this is just for demonstration purposes. We're not gonna be transmitting. All right, so you can see the waterfall right there and the unit is powered off. Now I will tell you, I unplugged the solar panel because the solar panel produced a lot of noise even without the unit on. Well, the, the unit comes on automatically when you pump power into it. First thing I'm gonna do is turn the unit on. And you can see all the noise it's producing now. Now this is with the antenna sitting right, right next to it. So if you have your radio and your antenna 10 or 15 feet or more away, then there's a good chance that a lot of this will be eliminated. But the AC output's not even on yet. So I'm gonna turn the inverter on and that makes things worse right there, turning the inverter on. Okay, so that produces a lot of noise there. We're gonna turn the AC off and it's not as bad. You can see the scope went a little bit darker, not as much blue. Turn the DC on, not much difference there at all. And now we're gonna plug the solar panels in. See, some of that noise went away. It's still got those lines in the scope, but you can't hear it as much. Okay, so now, now you see those four blue, uh, darker, brighter, I should say, blue lines? That is the solar panel. Or it, it's the uh, charge controller on the inside of the, of the unit, whichever one it is. So the solar panel and or, and I've used this solar panel on other products before and not had that. So I, I really kind of feel like it's the, uh, it's the charge controller, whether it's MPPT or whether it's PNW, I'm not sure. I believe it is an MPPT controller, which are typically noisier than the non NPPT controllers, but doing 75 Watts in right now, still at 73%. And overall, it's not noisy. I can't hear it. The, the, the noise that I was able to hear when I first powered the unit up is gone. Now you can see it on the scope, of course, but 
the actual noise I was hearing with my ear is gone because it's gone through its boot up cycle. I turn that on, it comes back. So the inverter is noisy, which inverters are typically noisy. That doesn't really surprise me all that much, honestly. And if I turn the inverter off, it takes it a maybe 20 or 30 seconds, then it'll finally go quiet again. But that is what that looks like. There it is. Now it's quiet again. Hopefully you can hear that in the audio. So long story short is that it does have some noise. Now, typically you are not going to sit your radio on top of or directly next to one of these power stations if you're going to operate the radio. And a lot of people use these for camping and whatnot and don't even really care about the radio. So from that regard, it's probably not too bad. But I have received questions in past videos about what power generator or power station, solar generator, would you recommend to power and run a radio? And my answer is none of them. They're not, it's not really what they're made for. These things are great to power your peripherals you bring with you. In my case, cameras. I charge my camera that you're watching right now is charged via USB-C. Your phone, your tablet, your laptop, a heater maybe, if you're out, uh, if you're out somewhere cold, uh, just anything. Anything you can plug into AC or DC is good with that that you might take on POTA or to a campsite, to an RV site or something like that. These are good to power all your peripherals, not necessarily to power your radio. Your radio is best powered by a direct 13.8 volt battery connection, like a like a like any battery, any lithium iron phosphate battery with a plug on it, plug it directly in your radio and go. That's the best way to power your radio. So special thanks once again to Segway for sending me this. I will put links in the description below for any specials they might be running. I think they're running a special now for the end of the year and uh, might be doing something else later. So I'll change those as time goes on. Put a comment below. Let me know what other tests you would like to see on this unit. And uh, let me know if you have any questions about it.